sing, shout, and clap your hands. I am so free with a lot of fun little action. So get up on your feet and dance and sing along with us. There is. Good guess. Took Miss Miriam. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, there's only one vowel. That's a good There's clue. only one vowel? Oh, oh my goodness. How about a B? No B. Oh. No B. How about F? There is an F. <gasps> good for me. <laughs> F. <laughs> I, I think I can solve it. All right. Is it a D? <gasps> it, it is! Yes. All righty, All so right. our word for the week is fed. And we are going to talk more about that word in our story. Well, thank you for introducing the word for the day, which is Fed, and it comes from Matthew. We've had a lot of Matthew during summer Sunday school, and it's from Natalie. Can you point to what the, our lesson today is? 14, 13 through 21. So before I do that, though, I, I just wanted to share a quick story. I was sitting at my desk during the week, and I was sipping out of my favorite cup, and somehow I got a little hole in my chin, and some water got on my desk. So I reached over to get a Kleenex, and I was all out of Kleenex. I didn't have any. So I got in the car, and I drove down the block here to Walgreens, and I went in, and I said, I'm, I'm looking for Kleenex. The person said, well, that, that's a pretty hot thing to buy right now, but we do have some. So the person behind the counter took this out. I looked at it and I said, this is Kleenex. He said, yeah, this is Kleenex. I said, it's not used to what I'm dealing with. And I explained the box and told him my box was empty. He said, no, this is Kleenex. Well, it was his job. I figured he knew what he was talking about. So I bought it. I came back to the office and I put it on my desk. And then... I had another little accident with the straw, and I got a little water on the desk, and I reached over and I picked it up, and I tried soaking it up, but it wasn't working. And I thought, this is the worst Kleenex I ever bought. And then Miss Natalie walked into my office to talk about summer Sunday school, and she saw me doing this, and what did you say? asked you what you were doing. I said, I'm trying to wipe up the little spill on the desk with this Kleenex, but it's, it's just spreading it around the desk. And then Natalie, you probably at home have already guessed what the problem is, but Natalie was really nice. What did I have to do this, Natalie? You have to unwrap it first. Unwrap it, and then I get to the Kleenex. It's inside. So, kind of like in that way, that's a little part of what our story is today. And it's not about Jesus feeding anybody Kleenex, but we're going to talk about why that's important. Could you hand me that good news Bible there, Miss Natalie? Thank you. So this story, again, comes from Matthew, comes from the 14th chapter of Matthew. I'm going to start at the 13th. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat, he went to the lonely place by himself, and the people heard about it, and they left their towns, and they followed him by land. And Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled for pity with them, and he healed their sick. That evening his disciples came to him and said, Jesus, it's already very late, this is a lonely place. Send these people away and let them go to the villages to buy food for themselves. And Jesus responded, they don't have to leave. You yourselves give them something to eat. The disciples looked at one another and they looked at Jesus and said, all we have are five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, well, bring them to me. So he ordered the people to sit down on the grass where they were, 
And then he took five loaves and the two fish and he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks to God. He broke the loaves and he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. He did the same thing with the fish. And the disciples distributed the fish to the people. And when everybody ate and they had enough, the disciples took up 12 big baskets full of what was left over. What's really amazing is the number of men and women and children that ate were over 5,000. That's amazing. So, why did I start out with the Kleenex story and Natalie came to my rescue and said, you have to unwrap it. Well, in the story, people followed Jesus everywhere. They loved to hear him speak and they loved to be taught by him. So when Jesus realized that it was getting toward night and that they were going to need something to eat, and he asked his disciples to help out, and they said, hey, there's only five loaves of bread and two fish, and there's thousands of people here. Jesus said, you have to unwrap it. Kind of. Because he was, what he was saying to them was, we are going to ask for God's blessing. Now, you might see this as you're little. You might see it as you get older. All of our helpers here, all of our girls are in college now. And sometimes things happen in our lives that we don't necessarily count on, like half to feeding 5,000 people. And sometimes we have to unwrap something to better understand where we're at. And what we unwrap is our feelings and our need for God and our prayer to God and our asking for God's blessings for whatever it is that we have. Because in this case, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish and he held them up to heaven and asked for God's blessings. And there was enough. Kind of reminds me of how at Thanksgiving we have Mrs. Mary Ellen's family that comes to our house. Sometimes it could be as many as 45 people. She cooks for days. And every time we put the food out, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, we're not going to have enough this year. We're not going to have enough this year. But what happens every year, Mrs. Mary Ellen? We always have enough. We always have enough. We always have leftovers. We always have leftovers. <laughs> So in your life, just like Jesus fed the 5,000, Jesus feeds us. We pray, we ask for his guidance, we ask for his comfort, we ask for his mercy. And like the disciples said, hey, there's not enough here. With God, there's always enough. It's a great story today. Okay, I am going to turn it back over to the girls. I think it's birthday announcement time. Yay. Two birthdays we're celebrating this week. Our first birthday is Abby Carr. Yay! Yay, Abby! Also, this week we wanted to wish our mom a happy birthday. It's a very special birthday for her. We don't need to talk about age or anything like that, but it's it's a big one. So, happy birthday to mom! Yay. <laughs> and we just want to add, Mr. Mike how wonderful Mr. Paul, her husband, is because when I was texting with him about this day and the girls wanted to honor their mom, and he said, she looks like she's 30. What a wonderful thing for a husband to say about his wife. Two thumbs up for Mr. Paul. <laughs> Happy birthday, Christy. Unless, unless his wife is 23, and then that's not, <laughs> that's not as good.
go back into our next song, which is going to be Taste and See, which is one of my favorites. So everybody up, dance and sing along. Dear God, we ask that you remind us that you are with us each and every day and every way and that you are always looking out for us and that you will always provide for us whatever we may need. God, thank you for always providing for us and you're always there when we call and ask for you. And when we realize that we need to unwrap our need for you, then you perform miracles in our life like feeding all those thousands of people because we realize that we can't do everything on our own and we need you. So we, we need to ask for your help and guidance every day. And I just also pray for your help and guidance and keeping people safe and healthy right now. And um, let us all just be thankful that we have this time to meet together, even if we can't see our friends in person and we really, really miss them. It's so awesome that we get to do this together. God, help us to keep the faith in our hearts and smiles on our faces another week. And in God's name, all God's children shout, Amen! Amen.